My name is Dr. Manuina Road, and I'm the aesthetic dentistry expert for dentistry.co.uk. And we will be talking about what makes the perfect smile. <laughs> I think the first thing I need to say about the perfect smile is the perfect one is the one that's done without any restriction. Anyone who's kind of smiling and limiting the way they smile, it's never going to be as beautiful as someone who's just smiling openly. Um, and that's so much prettier, regardless of the imperfections that you might feel like you have within your smile your patient may feel like they have within their smile. <laughs> but let's talk about what creates the perfect smile uh, scientifically and, and, and art-wise and, and as cosmetic dentists, how we go about creating that. So first of all, let's start with, with lip position. Uh, the lips are the curtains within the theatre, so they, they mask the outline of the, of the smile. Um, we have a low, a medium and a high lip line. So a low lip line is if the lips cover some of the tooth tissue. So look at the tooth centrals, get the patient to smile, and if they're, they're hiding some of their tooth, then that's a low lip line. A medium lip line is if the lip sits at the central, the upper central incisors, gingival zeniths. So gingival zeniths are the highest point of the gum margin. So either just at the gum margin or up to two millimeters higher, that's a medium lip line and, and that's deemed as ideal. A high lip line is anything above that. So if you're showing gum above two millimeters uh, when you smile, then, then that's seen as, as a, high, a high smile line. So have a look at that and have a think what you're going to do about it. Um, there's not a great deal you would do about a low lip line. Uh, there are surgeries that you can do, um, your, your plastic surgeon or you can refer out, or maybe you do them yourself, I don't know many dentists that do, um, where, where they a small incision underneath the nose um, and then lift the lip. Um, certainly as we age, our upper lip drops just as everything does. And um, so, so that may be a procedure that, that people want to have to, to create a more youthful appearance. Um, assuming you were going to keep the low lip line where it is, then you'd want to make sure that there was still enough tooth display. So um, we're going to move on now to the ideal length of teeth. But before we go there, um, I, with tooth display wise, when, when lips are at rest, so when um, a patient licks their lips or says mmm and stops where their lip sits, uh, you should have between two to four millimeters of tooth display. So in a woman, four is really seen as ideal and up to the age of about 40 and then maybe a decade on from that, each decade you could lose potentially a millimetre of it. But it's very useful to show four millimetres of, of enamel on your incisors at rest. So if you've got that low lip line, it may mean um, elongating their teeth a little bit more than you normally would so that there was more tooth visible on talking and on smiling. Um, and although they may have a, a, a longer tooth, if you were to lift their lip up, who's ever going to lift their lip up and see, apart from you know the, their dentist and maybe them themselves. So the world will see, um, will see a perfect length of tooth. Um, if they've got a medium lip line, then that's all good. And if they've got a high lip line, then please refer back to one of my previous videos for dentistry.co.uk on treatments of gummy smiles. So lots of ways uh, to treat that. And um, so yeah, have, have a look at that video. So once you've got the lip where you want to have it, then let's start having a look at the, the teeth themselves. Um, around the teeth, you have the gums, which is also so important. Um, too many dentists ignore gum position. Uh, we really want to create symmetry to create a beautiful smile. Symmetry is beauty in nature. The things that we deem most beautiful are the most symmetrical. Uh, you could have an imperfection in your smile, but if you do and you want to keep it, then really you'd put the, the, the imperfection on both sides. If you've got a high gum line that's on one canine, rather than just having one tooth high, by lifting the gum on the other side, it actually looks, it looks a lot better, which, which is interesting. Symmetry is really, really is the key to beauty. So have a look at gum position um, and have a look at the symmetry there, whether it's nicely lined up with the level of the eyes, assuming that the eyes are level, sometimes there the interpupillary line is sometimes slightly canted, um, or are the gum margins leveling up with, with the horizon, so, so are they straight? And then um, once you've seen if, if they're canted and assuming things are straight, then start looking at the position of those gums. So the central incisors, we've talked about the, the position of the, the gum there and how that relates to the lip. Uh, the lateral incisors, so the next tooth along, should be just slightly lower, one to two millimeters lower than the centrals. The canine should be at the same position as the as the centrals, and then the premolars could be just slightly lower um, to work its way back. So, so have a look at gum position, and, and if the gum's not quite right there, then you could look at ways to, to correct that, um, either yourself or, or by sending to a periodontist. 
Um, then you look at the, the teeth themselves. So the, the length of the central incisors uh, should be 11 millimeters, um, and length to width ratios are really important. Uh, you want the centrals to be longer than they are wide. So 11 to 0.8 is, is, is a really good, uh, one to 0.8 is a really nice proportion. And um, and then moving back from that, um, the, the canine should be at the same length as the, the centrals, the, the laterals would be slightly shorter, and, and then moving back, the incisal edges, ed yeah, the incisal edges should follow uh, the lower lip line. And then you want to have a look at the, the incisal embrasures. Uh, you should have, should have your smallest embrasure between the, the centrals, and then the embrasures get slightly, slightly larger as you go further back. So that gives you a bit of an idea about some principles to put into place to create a perfect smile. Um, hope you enjoyed that.